Hello and welcome to Warren Field in Brawley, California. I'm Will Torres and alongside my broadcast partner since day one, Ron Rubio. Ron, Bell, this is Bell Week. It looks like it's felt like it's like it should be. It's been Bell Week, even though it's pandemic year, Ron. What are your thoughts and what are your feelings right now with, with what's going on with the Bell Week, Ron? By the numbers, it's the 77th annual Bell game for Brawley versus Central High, 77th annual. Yes, it's in April. April, what's the date today? 17, 16. Long ways from November when it takes place, but here we are. We survived what we can and salvaged whatever season that was able to muster up for these kids, and here we are, Will. Pageantry's there, the colors here, people are in the stands, bands in the stands. We got it going on. Let's have a good football game. Well, as you know, everybody, it has been a shortened season. And uh, with only playing league games and with very few away games, meaning uh, teams from out of, out of town here and out of Imperial Valley run, one thing that we have kept a, a good track on is what Brawley has been doing and what El Centro has been doing. You know, you have the El Centro Spartans coming into Warren Field with a 3-0 and record. Coach Rookie Pena trying to make that 4-0 and against his old Brawley coach here. So... One of, the, one of the things we're going to talk about with Coach Ron right here, we're going to talk about the, the giveaways and takeaways that what each team is going to have to do. So let's take, for example, the Brawley Wildcats. Coach Ron, on the offensive side, what are the Wildcats going to have to do to go against that tough, and, and, and when I mean tough, I mean they're fast and that quick, that, that Central Spartan defensive line. What do the Wildcats have to do to, to get past them? What the Wildcats have to do and want to do is avoid what happened to them last year in the Central game, at the Bell game in Central. Brawley came out with a big run by Blake Craigbaum, 80-some yard touchdown run. Those were the only points of the night for the Wildcats. From that point on, Brawley did not score a point. Why? They could not handle the front of the Central Spartans. That's something they have to avoid tonight. The offensive line for the Wildcats must come out firing on all cylinders, knowing what to do, being perfect as they can on all plays. And, hey, just like you said, that's an athletic defensive bunch on the other side by the Central Spartans. Coached very well, ran by defensive coordinator Brian Martin. So that's what Brawley has to do on the offensive side. They have the offensive weapons. They have Isaiah Young back there, junior running back. They have a sophomore quarterback. They have an Ethan Gutierrez, talented receivers, and Jaden Figueroa. So they, both sides of the ball will are loaded. It's a matter of who's going to execute and who's going to eliminate mistakes. So looking at the other side, Coach Rookie Pena has his Spartans. They have not been scored against nope. in this shortened season right here. They come into the season with outscoring their opponents and keeping them to a goose egg. On the offensive side, we've been, they're, they're led by that quarterback. I mean, the guy stands six foot six. Ron, you know, you he goes out there, he wears number two, and he's a leader of the – Central Spartans out here. What do the Central Spartans have to do against the Brawley Wildcats? Jordan Reed is the senior quarterback leading this offense. Central comes into this game outscoring their opponents on an average of 33 to nothing. Shut out all the way down to four games, but their offense is putting up points. What Central has to do tonight is keep doing what they've been doing. They hit you with the short pass and they have receive receivers that will take it all the way. They have a kid out there, kid very been impressed with them the whole year, and that's number eight. That's Fernando Morales. They have Fernando Morales as a kid. He'll catch a five-yard pass, and he'll take it 50 yards to the house. So keep that up. Keep the running game going that they're trying to generate. Uh, they have the running backs are Zarian Robinson, a freshman. He's been helping out first few games. And then they added Carlos Gomez. Gomez has come on strong uh, towards the last couple of games. So on the offensive side, Will, everybody's loaded. Brawley's loaded. El Central's loaded. The defenses match up. It's just going to be a game, Will. Whoever makes the least mistakes and executes 
and comes back. If, if something goes wrong, do, who's resilient? Who's going to come back? And that's how big games are made and played. Well, Ronnie, on this special night tonight, they're paying pri uh, a tribute to all the first responders here from Imperial Valley. And uh, that's what you're seeing in front of us right now. Brawling you in high school has uh, decided to support and condemn every, each and every one of them. And there is going to be a special tribute here tonight. Uh, Border Patrol in the horse, in the horse division, the, the horse mounted from El Centro sector, lost one of their own on, uh, his name was Alejandro Flores Banuelas. He was, a he was 35 years of age. He was struck and killed by a vehicle while tending to another crash on Highway 86. Now, I don't know if you remember those, that wind. It was one of those, yes. it was near Salton Sea. It was a tragic accident. But that just goes to show you what these first responders do. He was actually helping a, a, stranded, a, a stranded person out on, on Highway 86 near Salton Sea and was tragically struck by another vehicle. And so Agent Flores Benillas was, was a U.S. Marine. He was a veteran, served 12 years in the United States Border Patrol. He is also survived by expectant wife and three children. On behalf of VSN, probably Union High School, we would like to express our condolence to Agent Flores. We're taking a moment of silence right now. We will stand by while we pay our respects for Agent Flores. As we have a beautiful rendition, we can see the REACH helicopter reach around us. Just now, ladies and gentlemen, it definitely feels 
Bell game time. It definitely feels, I know there's been issues with the people of attendance. We welcome and we thank everybody for watching VSN. We feel we are your official high school Friday night football broadcast team. Ron and myself and everybody else here, Jonathan Butler, Sarah Torres, Joaquin Matus, and Jalen Fong, we appreciate you tending to. Ron, we've talked to both coaches. You know, one thing that must happen, John, uh, John self told us, every, they have to come out quick, Ron. That's one of the keys. And actually, it's one of the keys for both sides, Ron. They, they got to come out mistake free and they got to come out quick on the offensive side of the ball. Well, there's a saying that goes, you know, it, it's, you can, it's a difference between saying what you're going to do and actually doing it. So the execution, the preparation is that, that's how Brawley wants to start out. Now, are they going to? That depends on the boys out here. And, Big games, your big players show up, and then there's also players that you never thought were going to do something, they show up. So it's everybody has an opportunity. That's what's a great blessing about playing football. Everybody on every play that's out there can make something happen. So that's what John Self wants. That's what he needs. And let's see if the boys can do it. As we take a minute for the bagpipes to be played right now for Agent Flores. That, Ron, is just like touching. I mean, that, that is just touching right there. You know, we don't get to experience that a lot down here. Don't. You know, and, and, and uh, but when I do hear it, it, it does touch a special part of me. Ron, as both both sides pay tribute to Agent Flores, you know it's it's like I said, it's very touching. By the way, Ron, excellent job by probably you in high school under Chaka Alcantar to have this field ready. I I know they've been using it for soccer and, and other events down here. So you know, with every sport being played right now, Ron, and uh, some of the schools only allowing one out the athlete per per sport. You know, they've they've done a good job here. So let's get back to what the defensive side of the Central Spartans look like, Ron. We've had the, we've had the opportunity to see them. Ron, you, and you have seen them on film. You've talked to Coach Rookie. Talk to us a little bit about that defensive, that defensive 11 for starting for the Central Spartans. As I said earlier, they had, had uh, defensive coordinators, Brian Martin, Joseph Denton, associate head coach and DB coach, and Sean Kobe, defensive line coach. These guys have done a great job with this group of kids. They run a 4-2-5. That means they have four down linemen two linebackers and five defensive backs. All these kids move, they know their responsibilities, they're well coached, hey, the results show it. They've outscored everybody 134 to zero. Yeah. You know, and you know, it's, both teams have done that. You know, El Central's average score per game, 33 nothing. Brawley is 34 to seven. So on, the, on paper, it's an even matchup, you know, but that's paper, man. Paper doesn't win football games. Kids on the field win football games. 
So this is what we're about to see right now. Throw out all the stats, throw out all the scores, throw out everything that happened up to this point. What matters is what happens in the next 48 minutes. And there's a saying, 48 minutes of football is a lifetime of memories. And right now, man, it, these, it's going to happen for about 80, 90 kids right now. Hey, listen, Ron, if you're watching this telecast right now or you are here in person and you're not jacked up, you need to go somewhere else because it's bell time. It's We're ready to play some football. We're ready to watch some football. And you have... I mean, we're hoping you guys are sitting down, enjoying it, and watching it with a bunch of people. I mean, I'm Ron, I can picture some of our friends. They're sitting next to people, and even people we haven't met before, that are sitting next to people that know this exact feeling that they're feeling right now that me and you have felt out here. I mean, when you're out, you are tense. You have pulled up that chin strap. You know what's running through your mind. Do you remember those days, Ron? I, I sure do remember it. You know, it's just... Uh you know, the, the, the whole thing is just not today. It's just not the game, the, the day of the game. It's the start of the week, Sunday, when you wake up Sunday. You know the next day, Monday, is going to be your last practice of the, of the year, if you, you know, leading up to playing Central. And it's just something, it's an emotional, it's an emotional, I would say, roller coaster because you get pumped up, man, and you're just clicking, clicking, clicking. You can't wait for the day to happen, but you have to go through the daily routine. You have to get through the practices. And here they are, man. And as the captains come out to uh, for the coin toss, this is what we've been missing, Will. The first game of the year, it was only one captain per team. And now, look, depending on the tier that we're at, this is what's opening up. And thank God for this is happening. I mean, yeah. this is great, man. This is super, super good stuff right here. Credit to every school exactly. in the Carroll Valley for making this happen, not just tonight at the Bell game, but uh, we're actually gonna cover the Imperial Southwest, Southwest game. Tomorrow night. And then you got Vincent that came through and then uh, Calexico, with, they're battling the border. I'd like to say hello to our friends, John Moreno and Vic Carrillo down there. And uh, you know, and, and early in the morning at Southwest Stadium, Paulo Verde is also gonna play Mount Empire. So before I go too far, I'd like to mention tonight's uh, referees, that's John Seaman and it looks like Central John Seaman is your head referee. You have Alan Phillips in the middle. You have Benny Carter on the Brawley sidelines. You actually have Beacons. Nate one Beacons. Of, Nathan Beacons, one of the best referees, youngster coming along. And you have the veteran, J.J. Jackson. If there's an all-star of referee, this is the crew that I would have picked. Definitely would have picked. These are some of the guys out there. And uh, are, are they immune to mistakes, Ron? No, not a bit. But let me tell you, man, if you're going to have a crew out here, this is the crew to have. So as we, and th there is one good thing about tonight, you will have John Seaman will be mic'd up. So Central has won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. And pure, uh, uh, you will see Brawley receiving. So Brawley will start off, Ron. I mean, are, are we going to see what we saw last year with uh, the 50-yard dash? I mean, Central <laughs> coach, uh, Coach Banya being a student, of John Self many years ago. John Self, this is his 10th year, and this is rookie's fourth year. So I'm sure that the Central Spartans do not want to let the same thing happen as they happened last year, where they, you know, gave up a big out. run. And, yeah. you know, that, that, that's what big games are for. I mean, like we said earlier, Blake Craigrom made a great play.